morning. Welcome everybody and those on the live feed. The mother says, quick Henry, call the doctor. Johnny just swallowed a nickel. Henry says, I think we ought to call the minister. He's good at getting money out of everybody. <laughs> there will be fly tonight, no youth group, and that's at 630. All ushers, especially those newly elected, meet with Ken after the service today in the parish hall. All right then, you can make all checks available to Steve Jensen. <laughs> I do have one announcement. Uh, Matt just was talking with me, and first he asked if we have any of the uh, packets that we had in the back that were for people who might be homeless if you're driving through town or whatever you can give to the homeless people. If we have any more of those, I don't remember who was in charge of that, who was heading that up. So if you guys, if we have any more, I know Matt was looking for one, 
But what he was saying was that he actually has somebody that he knows that he was a co-worker with for a while that he just found out is actually homeless, that lives in our area in, in Watsika, I believe. So if you also know of any resources that Matt can defer to to help this person, um, you know, whether there's, you know, food pantries or whatever, whatever information that you could give to Matt, uh, any of you, uh, that would be helpful for him as he's trying to help minister to this person, that would be great. So if you have any ideas for Matt or resources for Matt, phone numbers or whatever he can do, if you would just touch base with him before you leave the service today, that would be helpful. Are you okay with that, Matt? So he's going to try and, and help her this next week somehow, however she can, however he can do or whatever, but however we can support him in, in that opportunity for him to minister to somebody, let's try to do that. So... Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made that I have not made? All right, we'll begin our service then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our call to worship today is from responsive reading from Exodus chapter 20. It's on page 113, so if you'll turn there. And this is the, the Ten Commandments, and there was times when... When we were at uh, Bible school and seminary, that during the chapel that we would have uh, our confession of sin, in a sense, was the confession that we used was the Ten Commandments, or part of the service was around that. And so I thought that it would be fitting that sometimes we would do this, where we would read through the Ten Commandments as a response of reading. And, and the point of doing that is to recall to mind some of those things that are there. I know you guys have this stuff memorized, right? I mean, you've heard this stuff from... A little age, but sometimes if we just take a moment to meditate on it, it's not just to read it and to have it just go in one ear and out the other, or in one ear and out the mouth, whatever you want to say. Uh, but for a moment, let it let it catch in our mind what we're saying, the purpose of what it is, and and why we're saying these things. And so, uh, the congregation will read the bold. Then God spoke all these words, saying. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the inequities of the Father on the children, on the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave him unpunished who taketh his name in vain. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. You shall not murder. You shall not, commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Let us pray. Lord God, we are thankful this morning. We're thankful for the hint of your word, for the glimpse even of your law here. For we know that these things that want to oppress us, that want to make us feel like we've been enslaved, point to the freedom that we have in the gospel. It points to your mercy and to your love. 
As we feel the weight of your law, Lord Jesus, may we also feel the rescuing and saving of your grace. Today, Lord Jesus, may we, may we be bound in your presence. May we be uplifted by your spirit. And may we be encouraged in our souls. For, Lord, your love is everlasting. It reaches through all eternity, from one end of time to another, and sits and gathers with us even here today. May you be glorified this morning. In your holy name, amen. Would you please rise? Let us sing together our opening hymn, hymn number 586, There is a Place of Quiet Rest. Let us bow before the Lord and confess our sins. <coughs> Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess to you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and ask you for Christ's sake, Grant us forgiveness of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the declaration of grace and absolution this morning. If this be your sincere confession, and if with penitent hearts you earnestly desire the forgiveness of sins, for the sake of Jesus Christ, God, according to his promise, forgives you all your sins.
and by the authority of God's word and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I declare to you that God, through his grace, has forgiven all your sins. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please be seated. We'll call on the scripture reader at this time. Old Testament lesson is found in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, and then chapter 2, verse, till th- chapter, verse 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The heaven was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the scripture of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that there was light, the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let the expansion in the mists of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the, wa- from the waters. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God said it was good. And God said, let the heavens sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and the trees bearing fruit, in which there is their was even and seed each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be light in the expansion of the heavens to separate the day from the night. And let them be before signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be lights in the expansion of the heavens to give light upon (coughs) the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them into the expansion of the heavens to give light on earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the water swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the expansion of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures, and every living creature that moves. With, with, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird acro- according to its kind. And God saw it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth beasts of the earth according to their kinds. And it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth. And God... And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God he created, male and female. He created them, and God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with its seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And every beast of the earth, and to every bird of of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given given every green plant, behold. It was very good. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he had rested on the seventh day from all of his work that he had done. 
So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it, God rested from all of his work that he had done in creation. The New Testament lesson is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the shames of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of the heaven, of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand with, withstand an evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fasted on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as your shoes for your feet having put on the readiness given from, by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the, spirit, the sword of the, with the spirit, which is the word of God. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The gospel text comes from John chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. So he came again to Cana, Cana of, in Galilee, where he had made the water wine, and at Capernaum there was an official whose son was ill. When this man heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, from Judah to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. So Jesus said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, will you not believe? And the official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. And as he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. And he asked them in the hour when he began to get better, and they said to him, Yesterday, on the seventh hour, the fever left him. And the father knew that was the hour when Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. And he himself believed, and all his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judah to Galilee. Here ends the reading of God's word. Let us continue our worship service now by joining together, confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We'll call on the children at this time for the children's message. <coughs> well, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. What do we got in here? Ooh, it's kind of heavy. Is it, is it tasty? Can I eat it? No. What? You didn't bring me any food? 
Oh boy. Are you going to be a fireman when you grow up? Yeah? yeah? Oh man, that's nice. It's still got batteries that work. <laughs> My kids are like, what are batteries? This is nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to we're just gonna call Steve up. Come on up here, Steve, and if you'd like to go ahead and give us a children's message. You guys know that Steve's a fireman, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what, what's interesting about firemen? Is that they actually run in the direction, and, and this is true for, for many different people who serve our communities and serve our nation, but they run into the place where everybody else is told to flee from, right? Because what happens, what happens if your house starts on fire? Have you guys ever talked with your parents about what you would do if there was a fire and what you're supposed to do in your home? No? no? Parents. <laughs> right? You should always talk to your parents about... What would happen if all of a sudden you woke up and you smelt smoke? Where are you supposed to go? Where are you supposed to meet your family? Yeah, you want to get outside, right? You don't want to stay around. But when you get outside, you have to meet somewhere. And what if you get to a door and it's locked and it's shut? What do you do? No, you have to be careful. There are certain things you do and don't do. But all of that things, all of that things, you guys, what happens when you hear the fire alarm like at school? Are you supposed to stay in your classroom and hang out? Or are you supposed to get up and leave? Get up and leave. Yeah. But the firemen, what they do is when they hear the fire alarm, they rush into the danger to try to save people. And, and so to be courageous and to be somebody who saves, they have to run towards the danger instead of away. And did you know that Jesus did the same exact thing? Right? Because the fire alarm went off in heaven, right? Like we sinned and we were in trouble, just like a fire was happening. And the alarm went off. Did Jesus just kind of like hang out? Was like, I got, I don't, I don't need to do anything. I just, these guys will get it. Or what, what happened? Yeah, so did he, what did he do? What, this should, I could take a moment to do confirmation teaching right now, but I'm not going to. And since we've got confirmation students up here, right, Hannah? Did you, you didn't sit on the end knowing I was going to pick on you, did you? No, okay, so I'm not going to pick on you. But you know what he did is he left heaven, right? And he came to earth to save us. And when everybody else would be afraid to try to do what it was going to take, in fact, it wasn't even that they were just afraid. It's simply they could not solve the problem. Right? It's kind of like a fireman. If they all went to the house and they were going to try and save the house, but then the house was totally burned and they could do nothing, then guess what happened? Jesus shows up in the background and is like, move aside. I got this. And he saves where nobody else could do that. That's what he did for us. And so while we flee danger, and naturally we don't want to go to the place of danger, Jesus went all the way to the point of death for us. He ran into danger so that we might live. Is that something good to believe in? Yeah, that's like the best thing to believe in, right? So there's two things we're going to do today. We're going to pray. And we're going to thank God for his courageousness, for being courageous for us and to, to save us. But then at some point in time today, who else was a fireman? Is there another person who does fire stuff here too? It's not just Steve, right? I thought there was another person. Wasn't there another person? Isn't there another person, a volunteer fireman? Mm. Is that what it is? Yeah, see, I, I thought there was somebody else, but my brain is small and forgets. So what you're going to do is sometime today before you leave, you're going to go shake uh, Steve's hand too, okay, and thank him for serving, all right? And I know he probably doesn't want that and he doesn't like that, but tough luck, right? All right.
Hands out. Hands together. Dear Lord, we're thankful for you that like a fireman, Lord, you ran into danger. Lord Jesus, where you saw that there was no hope for us, there was no way of, of we could save ourselves and that we were in a place where we needed to be rescued, Lord, you came to the rescue. You were beyond courageous because you didn't just run into danger, Lord. You took on danger. You took on death. And you became victorious over all those things for our sake. And so we're thankful. Let us never forget it, Lord. In your holy name, amen. All right, good job. Red bag, where did I do with it? Over here. <clears throat> okay, who did I say? Well, no, we'll, we'll do another brother another time. So we're going to do... Isaac, you've had it already recently, haven't you? Yeah, you got to put your hand down. Now, your brother had it recently, right? But you guys haven't, right? Okay, so in our home, we do youngest to oldest. So this time I'm going to pick your sister. So I appreciate your patience, okay? No, this sister. <laughs> I'm four. She's six. Yeah, so you're littler, right? Okay, so you get it. Okay, you guys can go be seated. Thank you. Yeah, you did have it before then. That's right.
Today we begin chapter 3 in Genesis, and I'll be reading today from the New American Standard, and I've chosen that on purpose, but I would like you to follow along in, in whatever translation that you might be using, um, and we'll be talking about some of the difference that we find there today just a little bit. So uh, we'll begin then with verse 1, and we'll be reading through verse 7. Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to woman, Indeed, has God said, You shall not eat from any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, From the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat from it or touch it, or you will die. And the serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was the delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave it also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. Let us pray. Lord, you've given us your word. And that thing that which we have, the word that you have given us, is sufficient and effective unto salvation. Today, Lord God, may it May it enrich our lives. May we be uplifted and encouraged and strengthened. May your spirit apply this word to our life today. May we rest from the effort to which we give ourselves and cause ourselves to try to muster up something within us for reason, for believing, and for even obedience, Lord. Today, may we rest in the fact that you achieve your will, that you apply this word to our life, that you call into the darkness, come and walk in newness of life. Grant us these things today. In your holy name, amen. There's so much to talk about just in these first few verses of chapter 3. There's more than one sermon that can be preached on this particular passage. I could specifically sit and talk about the differences, and maybe often you've heard this passage of Scripture being preached and focused on, the problem within which uh, Eve (coughs) defends her faith, as the serpent challenges her in her knowledge, her mistakes, her blunders, as she uses the word of God where she makes mistakes. That's not the focus for me today. I do not want to speak on those things. In fact, we're pretty much going to just skip past verses 1 through 5. Because I want us to focus on verse 6 so wholeheartedly. Today, the things that we see from 1 through 5, the one thing I want you to recall as we begin to look at verse 6 is that the serpent was crafty. Now, there are some of you in this particular congregation that are crafty as well, right? Some of you women love to do crafts, right? Yeah, I've been to some of I've I've been to one particular congregation member's basement where there is so many cool crafty things, and most of them are Santa Clauses and Christmassy stuff, and they're all wonderful, and I love that stuff. Right? I love crafty stuff. That's not the kind of crafty we're talking about here, right? Well, the serpent wasn't like, "Come on over, let us make some Christmas ornaments." No. He was crafty. And up to this point, did Eve 
or Adam for that fact have any reason to worry, right? I mean, because for an example, I could be here and be like, <laughs> didn't she recognize that that animal was talking to her? Hello? Right? Like, what did the moose talk to? No, you know, so you go, you're not just going to be like, okay, there's a snake talking to me. There's a problem. Well, up to this point, there was really, there was no deception, right? There was no reason to fear. There was no, there was no reason to doubt. There was no reason to question what was told to them. And so they believed and they followed and they had that childlike faith. And quite frankly, they had something that we often try to protect in our own children, and that's innocence. I don't know about you, but one of the saddest things for me to think about is when our innocence is often taken from our children in any way. It's hard to watch your children suffer in ways that they should not have to suffer to battle things that they should not have to battle. The serpent was crafty. One of the things that I want to talk about here is that there are two different pictures that can be painted from verse 6. And one of them is described in the English Version, the English Standard Version, the ESV translation, because what it says there, and I'll read it from the, from the ESV in verse 6, as it says this, So then when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her. That's different than, and she gave also to her husband with her. And I want to make mention of this because this very point was brought up to me after the sermon last week when I was like, she was alone, right? We can't be alone. It's bad for us to be alone. Is that, well, Adam was with her at the time of temptation. However, that's one picture that can be painted here is that she, that Adam was with her and that you get this kind of picture, if you can think in your mind, I think in illustrations, right? So I think in pictures, when I, when I read things, I, I envision what it was like, and my imagination probably works over time too often, but, you know, I can kind of picture that they're walking, and then there's the tree, and, and you know, they have this conversation with, with the snake, and then all of a sudden, she decides, oh, this is good, and so she climbs up into the tree. Actually, what she does is she gets out her little giant, right? <laughs> and then climbs up it, right? Because you know how that is. She'd just been watching the shopping channel and she just ordered it and it just came in, you know, via UPS. And so she takes down a fruit and then she hands it, she eats, and then she hands it to her husband and then he eats. That's one picture that can be taken, you know, that. But I don't necessarily believe that it worked like that because the way the, way the, the way Hebrew works and, and the way we can see that it can be translated just like it is here, that her also to her husband with her. And the word with then is kind of used uh, in different ways. It can be used, uh, mainly it's together with. And so the together with may not necessarily have been together with her at the time of the temptation, but together with in the eating of the apple or the fruit. And in fact, I want to go beyond that to talk about some other stuff. The word gave here, right? And she gave also to her husband is significant. And this is why. 60% of the time when this word is used in the Hebrew language, it's simply to give, right? Just stating giving, gave, give. 40% of the time though, it goes beyond that and has to do with preparing, it has to do with, uh, let me, I'll, use, I'll use some of the words because that'll help. Uh, so prepare, make, deliver, place, set. There's more to it than just the fact that it was given. Do you understand? So 
it's almost as if you get this idea that the food had been prepared and that the food was then given and it wasn't just like she's at the top of the tree, she takes a bite and then chucks one down at her husband who then takes a bite. That it was as if it had been used almost even maybe even in a dish or something and, and then been given. And this is important. And I'll, we're going to come back to the importance of that. In fact, the base word, so in, in language, just like in English, you have the base of a word and then that's stuff that's added to it, right? And sometimes a word form will change, but it means the same thing. So give, gave, given, those are, you know, so give and given are, are the same word with a base root word of the same, blah, blah, blah. Okay. The root word in this word for give in the Hebrew language is also the same root word for the name Jonathan. Okay? Interesting. We'll come back. As we find them here, there was something that goes beyond the two pictures that we get from verse 6. So the two pictures that I want to make mention of, okay, so you have this idea that they were together, they eat, he passes, she, you know, she eats, he, she passes, he eats. Or the idea that she was deceived, whether he was right there with her, maybe he was off a little bit further away, but there was more to the preparation and the giving of the food, and then they took and they both ate. One of the things that we find um, from other parts of Scripture, did I... You know what I did? I turned and then I left my notepad somewhere else. Okay, there's a couple other passages of Scripture that I wrote down. One of them is in Timothy where it says that, specifically it says it was not Adam who was deceived, but it was Eve. And if you look at later on when we look here in a second, in a couple days or, or next week, when we look at the curses that come from the sin, God doesn't say that he was deceived by the serpent and so sinned, but he said, because you listened to your woman. You listened to the woman, your wife. And that was his, his trouble. Every sin, listen now and pay close attention. Teens, I want you to hear this. Those of you who are juniors, seniors, and going off to college, please, Stop what you're doing and focus your memory and your, and your attention for five minutes. Quick, I'll make them quick. Just listen for five minutes. Every time that there is temptation, every time that we go to sin, there is something that is alluring, something that is pulling us, that is a desire, right? Like, I don't just go eat chocolate cake because I'm hungry, Right? I didn't walk by the desk this morning and grab a donut and eat a donut that I wasn't supposed to have that Matt so graciously said he didn't see me eat that my wife reminded me I wasn't supposed to have and the other men kind of just looked away. I didn't do that because I was hungry. I did that because glazed donuts taste good. Something was stolen this day in the garden. And the tree was desirable to make one wise. I mean, it's not wrong to want to be smart, to want to be intelligent, to want to have wisdom. Right? But there's an extreme problem when we give up of ourselves who we are and who God has asked us to be for that reason. This is what the world wants us to do. You're going to go to college and they want you to sacrifice who you are. They want you to change what you believe so you fit what society says that you need to be. You will be challenged in your faith. They will ask you, can you really believe that? 
Did God really say that? Is there really a God at all? And the thing that they're challenging, the thing that they're trying to take is your innocence. In front of a group of people and his foolish disciples, Jesus looked at them and said, unless you have faith like a child, like one of these, you won't enter. Will you surely die? All of the sudden, Eve was deceived. And it wasn't like, here's the problem that I have with the first picture from verse 6. It wasn't kind of like they were hanging out and then they talked to the serpent and they're like, even Adam, you know, they're kind of like, okay, well, well, maybe not. Okay, whatever. Let's, let's have, let's go ahead and eat. No. That wasn't like willy-nilly deception, right? It wasn't like, oh, okay. She saw that the tree was good to make one wise. In that statement, you see the allure, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. I've seen it in my wife's eyes before, right? We'd be walking down the, the street in Estes Park. And you know what she sees? Taffy store. Oh, the taffy store. The allure. Oh, taffy. And then she goes and gets something like black licorice taffy. It makes you want to throw up. I don't even know what. There's something wrong. Okay, there's something wrong. Black licorice is, is like a weed. It's like a pea, right? Just like coconut. Okay? It's a product of the fall. They're all, they're all products of the fall. Okay, so, so here's... She, She's completely deceived. She's, it's not as if it was kind of like, well, maybe, maybe not. Okay, whatever. Let's just do what? Let's just try it out. Oh, it's right here. Why not? No, there's more to it than that. She had completely lost the idea that she was not supposed to eat from that tree. That God said no. It wasn't kind of like, ah, whatever. It was, I'm completely all ready for this. I want to be wise. I want to be more than what I am now. Do you hear that? Hear that. This is the problem that we have. We look around at everything else. The grass is always greener on the other side. We always want more than what we have. We're never satisfied with what God has given us, who God has made us to be. We want more. Wasn't it enough with who God had created her to be? Absolutely. Women, girls, teens, listen. You're enough with who you are, who God has made you to be. You don't need to be more. You don't need to look like the cover of a magazine. You are fine. Do not look on the other side of the fence and think it's better over there. Will you surely die? The deception was thorough and complete. And the temptation was more than she could bear. We should never, here it is, teens, five minutes is up, maybe I took a little longer. Never lose yourself in your pursuit for your future. Never lose yourself in who you are, who God has made you to be, who God identifies you as, for the sake of wisdom or anything else. Coop, do you hear me? CJ, do you hear me? Don't lose yourself. It's dangerous. You will never achieve the picture, the image that the world says you need to be. You will never get there.
Why do I see more of the picture than in verse 6 of a second picture? Where the focus isn't on the fact that Adam was there, but that he took part in the eating, that he took his part in the sin. He had his own sin that he fell for, his own temptation, his own lure. Complacency was that one for him. He was supposed to know what was going on. He was supposed to be informing his wife of what had God had, com- had said, thoroughness in those things. And he didn't follow through with those things. But it comes down to the word forgive. As she gave, as that word is so important that they name people after it. Do you know what Jonathan means? Jehovah gives. You think the serpent is crafty? And he is. He's certainly more crafty than you and I. If you were to sit down and play chess with the serpent, you would lose every time. Guess what? The Jehovah gives. Before the craftiness of the serpent could ever be played out, The craftiness of Christ was ready. While one was meant to destroy, the other was meant to give. I mean, because if you think about it, I always go to this because I I don't know about you, but this is, you start reading about these and you start thinking of these things and you, you come to this place. I think logically, I think when we try to reason, we come to this place and we say, why do it? God, why do it? If you knew that the serpent was going to be craftier, if you knew they were going to fall, if you knew they were going to eat, and you knew these things were going to happen, and it was all going to come falling down, why do it? Why create in the first place? If everything is going to be tainted, and you're going to make Stevie peas, why do it? Well, If you knew that it was going to cost your son, why do it? The end result is so much better than anything as we go through there. Do you realize, right? The end result of us being saved by grace, being able to stand before Christ and God in love, to be in his presence, to bask in his glory, to be away from this fallen world, but to be present heavenly with the Lord, the end result is so glorious that it goes beyond anything that can be given, including Christ's life. What love. What love the Father has for us. You think, you think the serpent is crafty. Hmm. He's got nothing on God. The thing that was meant to kill is now the thing that becomes my salvation. Can there be any more crafty than that? While one thinks he's victorious, the other becomes the king of kings and the lord of lords. That's crafty. Let's pray. Jesus, we need you. Beyond beyond what we might think. And while the world and Satan want to take our innocence, They want to put us in a place where we've been enslaved to the world around us, to our own desire, and to the lure of temptation. We find that you gave. You prepared. And you delighted in the sacrifice of your own life that we might live. 
What beauty. Lord, how could we not honor you? How could we ever sit and not be grateful? May every breath we take be a reminder of the depth of your love every time we feel our heart beat. May we be reminded of your love. And may the belief that we have as a child, may that never be snatched or taken. We're in need of you in every place. Thank you, Lord. In your holy name, amen. Please rise.
Lord, we are reminded that we think of all of those who serve, for, for men and women who have fought and, and died for our country, for our freedom, for the ability that we have to come before you, even at this altar, at this congregation, in this church building, at this place, even here in Milford. We understand that our freedoms were not free, that they costed and that people paid. We're thankful for each one who sacrifices, for each family that deals with a member within it that serves, who are challenged to believe and to know that you are still God. Thank you for each and every one who serves. And in that, Lord, we see that you served beyond them all. Your service for us was indefinite. That it was complete. It was satisfactory. It was more than enough. May we always find ourselves believing. Lord, if you find our heart to be hard, that you find our faith to be stale, rekindle within us the flame of your gospel. May your spirit not only move mightily among us, but may it move mightily within us. I am thankful, and we are thankful, Lord, for your love. Bless those, Lord, who need your hand of healing. Be with those who could not be here today. And Lord Jesus, be with those who mourn. God the Father in heaven, we know that you know what it means to mourn. And that we know that each and every one of us, as we mourn, you are more than able to empathize and to sympathize with each and every one. Be with them all. And we pray the prayer that you have taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please receive the benediction. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace, comfort and strengthen your hearts in every good work and word. Amen. We conclude this service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let's sing together our closing hymn, Standing on the Promises of God.